with the year approaching alongside a little more than half a year since starting my own channel, why not look back this year to see and revise the highs and not so highs of 2021. Similar to last year, the pandemic screwed everyone's schedule of 2021, and in doing so, people who usually possessed outdoor activities or hobbies had no other choice but to either get caught or adopt indoor activities, resulting in the increased consumption of either model kits like Gunpla or figures like Figma. In doing so, one of the many indoor hobbies that I, even before 2020 though, enjoyed was collecting figures and assembling model kits. With that, 2021 was a fine year for plastic figures, as there were a lot to enjoy. In doing so, why not look back at the year with my best and worst figures, model kits included, of 2021. Starting off with my fifth pick is the SH Monsters 2001 iteration of Godzilla from GMK. Why then the 2001 version, you ask? The simple answer is that this Godzilla sticks to its simplicity while delivering top tier execution. Unlike perhaps the 2021 Godzilla where they blotched the paint job, or the highly articulated Kong which happens to fall apart very easily, Godzilla here doesn't possess the best articulation or a diverse array of accessories. However, it is the most solid out of the bunch, it doesn't fall apart, and for what it is, delivers a good amount of articulation. This is in addition to the superb paint job, where unlike the 2021 version, each individual component is meticulously painted, adding to that premium-like quality that's hard to find nowadays in modern monster arts. In doing so, this figure ranks this high in my personal list. My personal list! Speaking of Monster Arts, my 5th lowest ranking figure is the SH Monster Arts Kong. Don't get me wrong, this is a nice figure with loads of accessories alongside an unprecedented amount of articulation. Then why you might ask, is it ranked this low? To simply speak, Bandai focused too much on the articulation that they forego the stability on this figure. While this figure is great to pose with, it is a bitch when playing around with, so even if I want to move a limb, it just falls off, making it more distasteful with each day passing by. Eventually, I hardly touched this figure after my video, symbolizing how disappointing this figure was and why it's ranked this low. As longtime viewers will know, I'm an anime fan. No, scratch that. I'm a full-on otaku that has an unhealthy amount of obsession for the medium. This is further supported by my introduction to the Freight franchise, and with it, there was no better choice than... For my fourth place, best waifu of the year, John Duck from the Figma Lie. What can I say that I did in my review? The beautiful face, the intricate details, and of course the skirt and panties. Not to mention the... This is in addition to the numerous accessories involved that adds the extra play factor making it a great time for you to play with this figure. The only minor gripe I have with this figure is that the arms are stiff, limiting art movement alongside the open flat piece making it a little too heavy for John to lift. However, even with those gripes, it doesn't hold this beauty down and I definitely recommend it if you're a fake fan or, like me, a John simp. As a man of culture, I happen to enjoy multiple genres with mecha films and shows being one of them. One such show that was released this year that I happen to enjoy was Pacific Rim to Black, as it captured the heart of the original film while further developing the world and lore. With that said, the moment there was an Atlas Destroyer figure being sold, I pre-ordered it with the high expectations, thanks to another robot Damashi. Come and behold, the figure unfortunately did not meet my expectations. The plain paint job and loose paws just did not meet my expectations, but then again it probably was my expectations, maybe, as the initial price on this figure was relatively cheap even compared to a Gunpla. So you get what you pay for. When it comes to quality, it is a decent figure and you can have a great time playing around with it. In doing so, this is a decent figure and if you're a fan of Pacific Rim the Black or Atlas Destroyer, you may have a good time with this figure. It's just from my personal experience that I expected more and would have liked Bandai to put extra effort even for a higher price. 
Returning back to Figma, my third favorite figure of the year also happens to be a fate figure. Go figure. It's the Figma Okita Soji. While I haven't reviewed this figure as of now, the moment I saw the promo images, I was in love. Just by the looks, the sculpt is intricately sculpted with fantastic details, making this in par with the Figma genre. This is in addition to the Shinsegumi, the secret police that served the Tokugawa clan during the Edo period and perished with the defeat of the Tokugawa clan at the end of the Boshin War, uniform that oozes samurai, or to be exact, Bushido, which I am a fan of, automatically making it a top contender. However, what makes this figure ahead of my personal waifu Jean? There's no stiff part preventing any movement allowing this figure to engage in a variety of poses. In doing so, the Figma Okita Soji is my third personal favorite figure of 2021. My third dumpster fire of the year is, to many people's surprise, the figureized Lena. As people know, I'm a big fan of 86. Damn, I even read the light novels! before the anime was released, of course. In doing so, if I had high hopes for Atlas Destroyer, my expectations for Lena were through the roof. But guess my reaction when I got the figure. <sighs> Unlike Atlas Destroyer, which was just disappointing but a solid figure nonetheless, the figure rise Lena here is not even solid, to say the least. To say it lightly, the figure here is riddled with faults. Too many stickers, stiff movement, an ugly dull face, and the same price, if I recall, as Atlas Destroyer. This is a disaster. If you're a fan of Lena from 86, I would cold-heartedly say, stay away from this kid and find an alternative. Oh, I wish the horror stories would end. My second favorite figure of the year is a model kit that released early this year and one in which I did not make a video of. It is no other than the mobile suit that destroyed the Gundam, the real great Zeon, made by the same Bandai. Unlike the figure of Lena, the Zeon here is what happens when Bandai cares and gives it their all, just to briefly explain, very solid, an overabundance of details. Part leaning stickers instead filled with color separated pots, a lot of hidden gimmicks, numerous accessories, and most of all, fun to play with. This was the peak of Gunpla when released and set my standards to a new level, maybe a little too high to the extent that it spoiled me. That for the most part, I was expected to be disappointed with future Bandai releases. In summary, even if you're not a fan of Gundam, I would recommend this kit to any fan of model kits to witness the next generation of model kit technology. This would have been my number one had it not been for a future release, 8 months later to be exact, that pushed this to second place. But firstly... Speaking of Gunpla, the second place here also goes to another Gunpla. To be exact, a high-grade Universal Century Kushi Gundam. As stated previously with the SH Monster X Kong, too many eggs in one basket that ruins the integrity of the structure. The same implies here, as the additional articulation and transformation was achieved at the sacrifice of stability, making the Kushi Gundam here, while extremely good to look at, also extremely brittle, making it not only a hell to play with, but just a hell to HOLD! Even its rival, the Penelope Gundam, was solid, Making me wonder, why Bandai? Why did you have to spoil a good design with an overbearing amount of accessories? But this kit, when compared to the number one, will seem solid and consumer friendly. <laughs> Returning back to my number one of the year, best of course, there was no other figure released this year that not only met my expectations, but shattered them and redefined the meaning of figure waifus. Here comes no other figure than the real great High New Gundam. What can I say that I haven't already said in my review? The superb skull, the color separated pots, numerous accessories, numerous gimmicks, and inhuman levels of articulation. This kit has it all. I thought nothing would beat the Zeong and that Bandai spent all their juices on it. But Bandai proved me wrong once again and instead doubled down on the high new Gundam here, making me forgive the previously mentioned four figures in the worst category 
this not only surpasses Zeong in all other ways, but redefines Model Kiss and pushes it beyond this universe, and becoming Waifu of the Year. Thanks to this kit, I'm eagerly awaiting what Bandai has up their sleeves for next year, or 2022. Godspeed, Bandai! As longtime fans of my channel will know that I'm a sucker for figures that deliver a great bang for your buck, the high new Gundam being one of them of course. However, if the quality does not mean to give him price, then I'm pissed. And no other figure gave me an existential crisis as much as the good small company's DX Dino Xenon. The moment I saw Dino Xenon, I was eagerly anticipating the release of the figure so that I could make it fight Godzilla. Oh, how I was wrong. With this release, it just proves that not anybody can make giant robots, let alone a mech that can transform. Floppy as hell, accessories, not impressive. Articulation is almost non-existent, and the figure falls apart too easily. However, the biggest sin that this figure retains is the over-exaggerated price, making me wonder whether the DX line was set up as a big fraud scheme to rip off loyal customers. But then again, how can I know? I'm just a humble salary man. Just mentioning about this figure drains all the life force out of me. The perfect description for my experience with this kid is... So that's it for the video, my personal best and worst of 2021. If you have any other ideas or opinions, please comment down below. With 2022 approaching alongside a roster of new figures being scheduled, I look forward to next year and hope to make a lot of videos about them. With that said, I hope a happy new year and please... <laughs>